What an absolute bombshell of a news report we get on Thursday night as the New York Mets are promoting top prospect Francisco Alvarez for this pivotal series against the Atlanta Braves and maybe beyond that. I am still reeling and we will discuss everything that lies ahead with this (laughs) thrilling weekend of Mets baseball we have for you on this edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter, at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor, and where I was writing an article previewing the Mets series against the Braves, and I'm doing my notes. I'm going to be talking about this stuff on the show, what we have to watch. That's what the entire show is going to be about. And I was like, you know what? I probably won't even talk prospects for this Friday Farm Report. Well, joke's on me. The Mets are promoting top prospect Francisco Alvarez for this series and maybe beyond that. It appears like Alvarez will be eligible for the playoffs. You look at Major League Baseball's rules and it says if a player is not on the 40-man roster, they are not eligible. But if they're with the organization, I guess there's a loophole that as long as you have a player that's been on the IL for a long enough period of time, Alvarez can be in. And so with guys like Brett Beatty that have been on the injured list, Alvarez can be eligible. And what we might see now is bye-bye Darren Ruff, bye-bye Mark Vientos. The Mets are just going to throw this kid into the fire. The 20-year-old superstar, the future face of the franchise, Francisco Alvarez will be in a Mets uniform facing off against one of the best left-handed starters in baseball, Max Fried. That is the confidence that Billy Epler in the front office is putting on this kid. That they're saying, hey, guess what? Biggest series of the season, biggest regular season series the Mets have played in I don't know how many years. I mean, the stakes of what the Mets are about to go into this weekend. And the confidence in this kid, who back in spring training, mind you, said, I'll make it to the majors this year. We all laughed at him back then. Here he is joining the club for this series. And you got to think that if you're going to make this move, that what you're saying is, look, Darren Ruff hasn't hit a lick. We need a right-handed compliment to Daniel Vogel back at D8. We want a left-handed masher in the playoffs. Mark Fientos, you got your shot. Not a long one, but, you know, you didn't quite show enough. Francisco Alvarez is the best bat in the Mets farm system, and they're just saying it's time. And I am absolutely stunned by this news. I did not see this coming. The the minor league season concluded on Wednesday afternoon, I believe, when the Syracuse Mets wrapped up their year. And I thought, all right, that's all we'll see of Francisco Alvarez. Like next week for the Friday Farm Report, I'll break down his season with the other top prospects because that's where we're going to be at at this point. Now he joins a a pennant race, and and it's crazy. But the potential that he has, it's unmatched. So I'm thrilled right now. And if you are unaware of who Francisco Alvarez is, if you haven't listened to the show all year, here are the basic numbers. In double leg. He hit 277, 368 on base, 553 slugging, uh, 18 home runs, 47 RBIs, a 146 WRC plus in 67 games played. And he went through a learning curve. He started the season hot, really went down in the dumps, figured it out, was scorching hot, earned a promotion at AAA. And AAA really struggled for a long time. His numbers overall in AAA aren't too impressive. But what is impressive is he had an ankle injury. He comes off the IL in the middle of September. And the way he closed out the season, he showed that he had adjusted to the next level. He was hitting 362 in 13 games in September, 483 on base percentage, 596 slugging percentage, three home runs, two doubles, 10 RBIs. He drew 10 walks over those 13 games. 
showing really good discipline at the dish. Now you get him here. And, you know, as I already mentioned, I work for Just Baseball. We just had our top 100 update. Alvarez was the second best catcher on our list behind Gabriel Moreno of the Blue Jays and the sixth overall prospect in baseball. I mean, raw power tool, 70 grade. Pretty much everyone around baseball has that for him. <laughs> this is such an exciting prospect. To get him into the mix now, I am just floored. And I think as much as you could say, all right, here's a catcher coming up. We're not going to see much of James McCann and Tomas Nito in the rest of the season going to the playoffs. I don't believe that's the case at all. I still think that the Mets want their veteran catchers commanding the pitching staff. But what this is, again, is a sign that they're done with their Darren Ruff experiment, which we were seeing given the at-bats that Mark Vientos was getting. Vientos got a face off against Jesus Cesardo, but Vientos didn't do much in that game, hasn't done too much. He had a decent series in Oakland, but overall has struggled a little bit. And Francisco Alvarez is the type of player with enough swagger that they just think you throw him into the biggest moment he's going to perform. It is a ridiculous amount of pressure to put on a 20-year-old's shoulders. But if there is a 20-year-old that can do it, it's this kid. And it, it reminds me, and I've said this before, I said this when I was talking about the potential of promoting him months ago this season, was that you have Miguel Cabrera at 19, I believe, uh, who helped the Marlins win a World Series in 2003. In the World Series, Miguel Cabrera did not even know who Roger Clemens was. Clemens brushes him back, and Miguel Cabrera hits an opposite field home run, I think a few pitches later. That is the type of brashness a prospect with that level of talent can have. I'm not saying Alvarez will be Miguel Cabrera one day, but what I'm saying is he has the talent that he can be. And there's very few prospects in baseball that have that type of absurd ceiling. So much has to happen for Francisco Alvarez to become a Hall of Fame type player. So I'm not saying he's definitely going to get there. All I'm saying is there is immense potential with this guy. And I am just out of my mind excited and shocked that we're going to get to see it this weekend. Uh, maybe beyond that, as apparently, according to a bunch of the reporters that know more than me, because I read the rules on LB.com and I'm like, I don't think he's eligible. Apparently, the Mets can get around it and they can put him on a playoff roster, which could mean that uh, Darren Ruff and Mark Vientos are gone. Uh, before we have to think about that, though, there's still this incredible series that we got this weekend. Three great pitching matchups, even more added to the storylines with Alvarez. I'm going to preview that series in just a minute. But first, Bet Online is the number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, in depth articles, and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action. Bet online where the game starts. The New York Mets will play the Atlanta Braves in the most pivotal series of the season. And unfortunately, I won't be there. I've been talking about going to this series for weeks on this show. I was about to get in the car. I've had a cold, or I thought was a cold, uh, for the last couple of days here. Turns out I tested positive for COVID. Um, so it, it sucks that I can't go out there for it. But honestly, considering the fact that Hurricane Ian just went through my state of Florida, I didn't even know lo the logistics of what the roads were going to look like. So that was already a wrench that was thrown into my plans. And, uh, you know, as much as I'm disappointed, I'm so excited to watch this series. It's going to be great on TV too. And I'll catch another one in the future. So, the other good news about that, though, as well, is I get to stay in the Locked On Mets studio. Had I been on the road, I probably wouldn't have gotten the Alvarez update. I wouldn't be recording a podcast right now, and I would not be able to give you podcasts all weekend, which I am planning. After each game, I'm going to hop on here, make the most of a bad situation, uh, and still get to do the show, which is you know the thing that I enjoy the most. So we are fine. Uh, I'm good. 
Uh, I'm not feeling too bad as far as my symptoms. So it is what it is. That's life. But let's get to the baseball aspect of this. And 156 games played this season. These two teams are separated by a single game. It has been an incredible division race. These two teams trading blows. The Mets nearly leading the division wire to wire. They did seed control for a single day on September 9th. Other than that, they've either been tied or in first place every day dating back to April 12th. They led the division by as many as 10 and a half games. The Braves went on a tear. They promoted Michael Harris, and they've been the best team in baseball since then, basically outside of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now they're going to square off. And if you look at the series or the season series up to this point, the Mets have the edge, winning nine of the 16 contests. That makes things really interesting when it comes to the tiebreaker because this year, a tiebreaker is more important than ever before. We will not play a game 163. And also, I should mention, since I talked about the hurricane already, I was wrong uh, all week. I, I was stressing about whether these games would get played. Mother Nature can work uh, you know, for you or against you. And in this case, when it comes to this series, the hurricane has pushed far enough uh, away from Atlanta that it appears like we're going to get games and probably games Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with no delay. So that is fantastic news. And that leads to no games being played most likely on October 6th, the final day after the regular season, the day before the playoffs started, which Major League Baseball wanted because they are saying no game 163. The tiebreaker will decide if this division comes down to even records by these two teams. And that is why the Mets have to win at least one game this weekend. I broke down the scenarios on yesterday's show, but for those of you who did listen, Here's where we're at with the Mets and the Braves heading into this series. The magic number for the Mets is at six. Do the math on that. They sweep this series. They will clinch the division on Sunday. But the big advantage they picked up by gaining that game on Atlanta now is they're sitting pretty because since they lead the division by game, if the Mets were to win this series, they will carry a two-game lead into the final series of the season and they'll hold on to the tiebreaker. That means that they would only have to win one of three games against the Washington Nationals to clinch the division. So if you win the series this weekend, you all but clinch. Because if the Mets can't go um, and return home and face the Nationals and take one of three games, they don't deserve the division anyway. So that is basically where things stand and where things get really interesting by taking that one game lead into this series. Is if they win just one game, the Mets will own the tiebreaker they would leave the series tie with the Braves and they would control their fate. So they would go into that final series against the Nationals. And if they swept it, even if the Braves sweep the Marlins, the Mets are in. So that is where things stand when it comes to the playoff implications. If you're a Braves fan, obviously you're rooting for them to win the series at least, but because the Mets still own the tiebreaker, that's not even a favorable scenario. The Braves sort of need to sweep this series. And if they do, they'll basically you know, lock up the division themselves because they would then steal the tiebreaker from the Mets and they would have a two game lead in the division heading into that final series. Very similar to if the Mets were to win the series. So that's where we're at here because then the Braves swept the Mets. They would need to win one game against the Marlins. They control their fate and they would get in. So that's where we are here. And obviously the implications of winning this division are massive. You want that by, you don't want to play in the wild card round. That is a given. Also, you don't want to face the Dodgers. If you end up as the wild card team, you'll have to go up against likely the Padres, the way things are shaking out. You win that three game series. And remember, the Padres are a star studded team. So that's going to be a tough matchup. Even though both of these teams have been far better than the Padres this season, that's not a cakewalk. You make it through the Padres, then you got to face the Dodgers in a five game set. And they've had their pitching all squared up, ready to go where the Mets or the Braves would have just exhausted some of their pitching in a wild card round. If you win the division, you get a bye, and you get to face the winner of the other series, which is either going to be the Cardinals versus likely the Phillies, or considering they're collapsing right now, maybe the Brewers. Cardinals are a tough team, to be sure, and I would imagine they make it out of the wild card round. You would much rather face the Cardinals well-rested after a bye than go up against the Dodgers after playing in the wild card round. And that's what's at stake here. What's exciting, though, is we're going to get three incredible baseball games this weekend with some awesome pitching matchups, and that's what I'll discuss next after a quick word from our sponsors. 
Could there possibly be a better matchup to kick off this series? Max Freed versus Jacob DeGrom. With Alvarez in the lineup against Freed, I'm still uh, thrilled about that one. I can't believe that news. I, it's like, pinch me. I, I just, wow. But this is going to be a great ball game. Uh, Jacob DeGrom is, got bumped up in the rotation. Bassett was supposed to take the hill first, but since everyone's fully rested after the two off days, the Mets opt for DeGrom to start this one. That would set him up to potentially, I guess if you really wanted to, he could start the final game of the season if you needed to clinch. I don't know if the Mets would want to do that ahead of a wild card round, but let's just say uh, they were to win this series against the Braves and collapse in the first two games of that series against the Nationals. They could still uh, go to DeGrom to close out the Nats if they had to, but more importantly, it would line them up to either start game one of a wild card round or just you know be as rested as possible for the playoffs. And you get your best pitcher to face off against Freed, who is by far the best pitcher the Braves will throw out in this series. Now, DeGrom has faced the Braves twice this season. The first time, it was his second start back coming off the IL. He was limited to around 75 pitches, ended up throwing 76. He allowed a two-run homer to Dansby Swanson uh, in the uh, sixth inning of that game. He had walked the batter prior. Before that, though, the first 17 batters that DeGrom faced, you might remember, he retired all of them and struck out 12. It was perfection from Jacob DeGrom. Incredible performance. Ends up getting a bit tired, I guess. Walks the batter, gives up the homer. Still a great outing. The Mets won that game 5-2. to two. His next start, DeGrom actually squared off against Freed. It was a precursor to this matchup. He allowed three runs in six and two-thirds. Meanwhile, Freed gave the Braves Seven strong innings, allowed two runs, and picked up the victory. Freed this year has faced the Mets four times. He's allowed exactly two runs in each of those appearances. Overall pitch to a three ERA and 24 innings pitch. You know Jacob DeGrom is coming off his worst start in literally four years. He's pissed off, ready to go. I cannot wait to see what he looks like on Friday night. Game two, I think Edge Mets, even though you're facing off against the wins leader right now in Kyle Wright. Uh, he has 20 victories on the season, looking for the 21st. But of the five losses he's picked up this year, two of them have been at the hands of the Mets, and those are the only two starts he has had against the Mets. The first time he faced them on May 3rd was the second game of the doubleheader where Carlos Carrasco gave the Mets eight scoreless innings. Uh, Re Wright was okay, uh, allowed three runs, um, with two of them coming on a double by Dom Smith and another a home run by Pete Alonso. August 4th, Kyle Wright took them out again against the Mets, had even less success, got knocked around for six runs in a game where Tyler Naquin homered twice, Pete Alonzo homered, and Daniel Vogel back homered. Now, Wright's going to be going up against Max Scherzer. Scherzer has been unbelievable this year, and he is undefeated against the Braves this season, picking up victories in each of his three starts against them. In his first two starts against the Braves, Scherzer went seven innings each time, gave up one run in one of the outings, Zero in the other, racked up 20 strikeouts between the two starts. His last time out, though, didn't really fare as well. Gave up four runs, but the Mets scored nine that day, and Scherzer still got the win. Final game of this series, Chris Bassett versus Charlie Morton. Now, that could be a rubber match game. What you hope is the Mets handle business with their two aces on the mound, have this series in hand, and they are looking to clinch the division on Sunday. That would be the ideal scenario, but the Braves are a great team. If these two teams split, it could be a rubber match, and I like the matchup against Charlie Morton. And I think Chris Bassett can certainly perform uh, with the stakes high. He's been great since the All-Star break, a 2.57 ERA and 12 starts. Uh, he's 1-1 one one this year against the Braves. His first matchup out against Atlanta, he allowed a home run to Austin Riley and three runs overall in a loss. In his second go-around, he fared much better. Uh, actually squared off against Morton in that outing on July 13th. And again, another precursor of what we're about to see. He goes six innings, allows just one run on a homer to Matt Olson uh, in the sixth inning of that outing. Charlie Morton, on the other hand, in the top half of that same sixth inning was knocked out early after he gave up a homer to Mark Canna. Uh, he allowed five runs in that game, three home runs overall. Wardo Escobar and Francisco Lindor hit the other two homers. Um, and that was not the first time the Mets got to Morton. On May 3rd, uh, early in the season, he was knocked out of the game with two outs in the sixth inning had given up five runs in the game, four of them being earned off of seven hits. He did have a great start against the Mets, though, the last time he faced them. This was on August 16th. Uh, struck out 12, 
over six and two thirds scoreless. Now, if you look at these matchups, you would say DeGrom versus Freed. You could say the Mets have an edge because it's the greatest pitcher on the planet, but considering his uh, his recent struggles, I'd call that a wash. Scherzer versus Wright, Mets have an edge. I think Bassett versus Morton, Mets have an edge. Uh, but all of these pitchers can be very good. So it's going to be a well-pitched series. The bullpens are rested. It's going to come down to which team can rise to the occasion in some of the biggest moments. And with that, I want to look at some of the hottest hitters going into this series. And for the Mets, there's three names to discuss. First one, Pete Alonso. He has been on a tear. A couple of weeks ago, I said Alonso needs to carry the Mets to the end of this season. He has done that over the last 15 days, hitting 267, 382 on base, 667 slugging, three doubles, five home runs, 20 RBIs. He has homered in five of the Mets' last eight games. He won the NL Player of the Week last week, sharing the award with Albert Pujols. Eduardo Escobar, he's been unbelievable. We talked about him um, a ton on yesterday's show after his heroics, driving in five runs to beat the Marlins and put the Mets in this advantageous position going into the series with the division lead. Uh, and his number for the month, 330 hitter, 379 on base, 638 slugging, eight home runs, 24 RBIs, a 183 WRC plus. He is leading the National League in F4. So this month, based on wins above replacement by Fangrass, he has been the most valuable position player in the National League. No one saw that coming. Then you have Francisco Lindor, who's had a really strong month as well. 308 hitter, 342 on base, 510 slugging, four homers, 18 RBIs, a 142 WRC plus. Uh, he has a 6.8 F4 on this season, a 1.2 F4 this month, which is right behind Escobar. For the year, though, he is one of six players who are trending towards being seven-win players. Uh, you have other guys that top the league like Aaron Judge, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, but Lindor is right there. He is looking to have what is clearly at this point uh, at least the second-best season of his career. He had a better year. Uh, with the Guardians, you know, previously the Indians, uh, and I think it was 2018, we had a 7.8 F4, but he's been amazing for the Mets this year, and that has continued into September. We close out looking at the hot hitters on the Braves over the last two weeks. Ronald Acuna Jr. has been pretty good, hitting 256 with 310 on base, 641 slugging. Uh, he has four home runs in his last 10 games played during that span with a 951 OPS. Meanwhile, William Contreras, over the last two weeks, hitting 326, 412 on base, 558 slugging, a team leading 970 OPS. That hot streak for him actually extends out to the entire month of September, where he's hitting 310, 391 on base, 500 slugging, a 147 WRC plus. And speaking of Braves catchers, Travis Darno ahead of him this month, a 148 WRC plus. Those two guys have been great. That's why they're usually DHing one, uh, you know, starting Darno behind the plate. You know, DH and Contreras. I'm sure, we'll see a lot of that this weekend. We close out with Michael Harris, the uh, second. He's been unbelievable all year. He was the turning point in the Braves season when they called him up. And this month, he's in 327, 347 on base, 582 slugging, six home runs, 19 RBIs, 20 runs scored, a team leading 156 WRC. Plus, his 1.3 F4 is just behind Escobar for second best in the National League. It's going to be a fun series. Two great teams, great pitching matchups. Alvarez's promotion to add a little bit of extra juice to it. Uh, I cannot wait to watch it. And like I said, I'm not going to be there anymore. It's unfortunate, but I will be in front of you more often. I'm going to do shows after each game, breaking them down this weekend. Let's see if the match can win this series. They've done it all year. They've taken it one series at a time. This is the biggest series I can honestly remember my lifetime as a Mets fan in the regular season. I might be hyperbolic by saying that, but damn it if I feel like that's true. Uh, what a weekend we have ahead of us. Make sure you follow, rate, and review uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On MLB, hosted by Paul Francis Sullivan. Locked on MLB is where you want to go to stay up to date with everything going on in Major League Baseball. Follow Locked on MLB wherever you get podcasts.